hey, what's going on? So it's been a bit since I've uploaded an actual content to this YouTube channel. I've been pretty focused on an album, um, which has taken up a lot of time. But now that it's finally done, I can uh, actually get back to making uh, making content, like YouTube tutorials. So here we are. I've been doing some sound design experiments lately, usually in involving specific tools, but sometimes I've been revolving those experiments around some more generalized techniques. Um, I have made observations that a lot of these experiments um, surround a specific, more general technique, and that's what the, I'm going to be explaining here in this, this video. Uh, this technique is called pinging. I'll start with the basic definition and then work my way into some examples. Um, and I should note, this is important. I'm actively making a point here to not give any applications of pinging, just because as with most of the things I like to talk about on this channel, most of the fun comes from taking the, like, the basic concept and then iterating upon it in your own in your own way. Right? You know, just it's more gratifying. So what exactly is this pinging technique? Well, that's a very, very, very good question. Um, pinging in the most in the simplest possible terms is the act of sending some impulse into something to generate a more complex sound. This definition by design is very broad, so hopefully the following examples will uh, maybe help to justify it. So first, I just want to focus on the impulse that I mentioned. For almost all of these examples, I'm going to be using a simple click from operator, um, which sounds like this. Very cool. Very awesome. Very great. Very great. Um, this is the simple click that will be used as the initial seed for most of the sounds that I produce. So the next thing I want to show is the simplest possible example of pinging that I can think of. That would be pinging a delay. So here, I'm sending this impulse signal into a delay. The sound is extremely boring. It's not, it's, you know, isn't really that much of a surprise. I'll play it. Whoa, great, fantastic. Who could have guessed? It's a delay. But, you know, still adheres to this definition. It's, a, it's an impulse that I'm sending into something to produce an admittedly more complex sound, even though, you know, it's an incredibly simple sound. Even though with this extremely limited set of tools, we can still make some somewhat interesting noises. For example, if I turn down the delay time and turn the feedback like this, we begin to hear a tone. So as I do this, like this, you can get some uh, tonal sounds there. And as we mess more with settings within delay, we can produce an unexpectedly wide array of, uh, of timbres. So if I do like some of the filter. A bit of ping pong mode. But there you go. There's a, uh, there is with the delay. So a little side tangent about this. The act of sending a, this tiny little impulse into a delay is called waveguide synthesis. This is how a lot of physical modeling synths generate plucked and bowed string sounds. And when combined with other processes, it can produce a very wide range of sounds. If you're interested, I've linked a book in the description that goes into some insane detail about a lot of the complex inner workings of uh, physical modeling synthesis. It's very, very interesting. So if you're prepared for some like mathy, mathy stuff, then go ahead and give that a read. All right. So then the next example I want to focus on is using auto filters. What like what? Using auto filter as a as a resonator. How the hell is that gonna work? All it does is change the frequency content of the input. You'd be right for most applications. This just happens not be a normal application. So um we're going to have some edge cases here. If I turn up the resonance like this on clean mode and send it an impulse, we can hear that it sort of has a slightly longer decay, right? If I open up this, this uh, very conveniently prepared scope here, um, like that, I uh, will turn up the gain a bit. So you have the impulse there has some sort of a decay, whereas if I, if I turn it off entirely, like... Um, I turn that off. You get you get that decay. Now you can amplify this effect by um, turning the filter to any of these analog model modes. And these, uh, I'll just do the example first. Whoa! Would you look at that? You can get it to to self oscillate, and th because these filters are analog modeled, then they, they have the tendency to, to self-oscillate. For example, I've got a, um, my camera isn't on right now, but I've got a, a micro freak right here in front of me, which is what I'm using to trigger the MIDI. It's got an analog filter inside of it. Um, and most analog filters, if you turn the resonance up high enough, then the, the frequency that it's resonating at will um, self-oscillate. So if I do this, I can change the frequency of the self-oscillation 
on this filter. And if, even if I turn the resonance all the way up, it will continue to sustain. And I've basically, from pinging, from this simple noise impulse, I've just got a, um, I've got a sine wave, which is pretty cool. But only a sine wave, really? That's kind of shitty. Well, we can change that pretty easily if we go into this morph mode here. Uh, with OSR. We can get some different waveforms. Like this. And even further still, if we introduce some modulation, right? So if I... Um, This is kind of a disgusting sound, but the point here is that all of this is coming from this, this little blip of white noise. Now, obviously there's a lot of applications for this, because like, why would I be talking about it if it was just like this little stupid thing? Because there's applications for everything. Um, but you know, like I said before, it's more fun if you figure it out. So just putting that little seed of an idea into your brain to so that. Now, another example, it's a bit more on the extreme side, and it produces some sounds that are more interesting. Um, and this sort of stems from the filter, by the way. Like I could, it's just another sort of in, more interesting example to, I guess, elaborate upon the filter is using a vocoder because a vocoder is essentially just a bank. Not essentially, it, it is a bank of bandpass filters. It can ping it, and it will produce some some sounds. You know, some of those sounds definitely aren't the most pleasant, but there you go. Because you have uh, these 36 resonant bandpass filters, instead of just getting one uh, self-oscillating sign, you're getting 36 because you have 36 bandpass filters. So there you go. Now, most of the fun occurs when you stack multiple effects together, right? Like using just a single vocoder, a single auto filter, a single delay is very, very boring. And unless you are going for that sort of sound, it's like there's not much you can do there that you can't do with a more complex synth. So um, I'm going to now show some examples of um, sounds that I made using only auto filter and delay. So, and I, of course, I'm using instrument rack as well, but I mean, audio effect rack, but whatever. It doesn't matter. So here's, I'll just go through these examples and then talk about them afterwards. <laughs> This one I, I made a few macros for. Pretty cool sounds there. gross bass and this oh, this is a random like thing generator so if I if I randomize these parameters we can um as it as it, all the delays are being modulated it creates some pitch shifting effects and in this last example I don't have an operator for so I'm going to need to put that there. I don't, I don't have one. So we've got some pretty, pretty sweet ambience. If I unsell all these. Got some pretty, pretty neat sounds there. Um, yeah, so some of them are very weird, but it's just more of a demonstration that um, the stuff that I was talking about is not dumb, right? You, you can you, you can produce a very large variety of noises from just a blip of a blip of noise, 
um, a simple simple delay and the self oscillating filter. So there's got to be a lot more than this, right? Well, fucking obviously, right? Otherwise, a video wouldn't exist. I normally don't just ping filters and delays. I ping all sorts of things. I, I would ping reverbs, resonators, flangers, phasers, granular delays, multiband compressors, filter banks, really anything that that um that works. The only really necessary property of a pingable thing is that it needs to be able to change how sounds are arranged within time. So, for example, a saturator, right? If I take a um, if I put a saturator on here, right, and ping it, whatever I do to this saturator, I'm not going to be able to affect um, anything about how this click sounds in time. I'm only going to be able to change just the sound of the click, not its temporal anything. But if I were to drag in something like a comb filter, right, if I, I think I have to comb filter something yeah max comb filter or to ping this this is a comb filter it's as you can hear affecting the, the impulse within time um so that's really the only necessary thing to something to be pingable now what i do want to note um, that's one more focused technique that i do like to use when doing ping related sound design i feel like it has enough applications that I feel comfortable talking about it in this video, even though it's sort of a shoot off of the initial technique, but it's it's got a lot of applications. So yeah, specifically the technique is creating your own custom impulse response that can be pinged. Um, the impulse response will be loaded into a convolution reverb and then, uh, and then pinged. I usually like to do just normal white noise with a volume envelope, which can be done really easily with an operator. For time's sake, I've already prepared this ahead of time, but if you if you want to see me, if you want to know how I, how I did this, I'll just, yeah, me in Discord or something. Uh, it's really, really easy, I promise. Um, so here's that sound. So that this is what's going to be our impulse response. So in order to use this within the Convolver, I need to render it to audio. So I'm just going to freeze this track and drag it over here and then move this into the convolution reverb that I have so conveniently placed on this here audio track. Very cool. And this is the this is the impulse, and this is it with the uh, the new impulse response that we've created. It's a bit quiet, so I'm gonna turn it up a bit with utility. Now, you may be thinking this is really boring, right? It's because you know you're just you're just using this noise to make other slightly cooler noise. So it may have already occurred to you, but literally any sound can be used as an impulse. Obviously. So if I take a drum loop, right, let's say, um, let's do the classic, no, no, you know, not, let's not do an almond break. I use almond, almond, you know, I used to call, I used to think it was called the almond break. I like the, like the, um, the nut, no, the almond break. I'm going to do the think break this time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then on this, I'll just drag the, let's drag on the hybrid reverb. On. Go ahead, good buddy. So now we've created like a weird sort of exponential decay delay thing just from this this noise impulse. And we can do this with anything, right? So if, if I if I take this off, still using the sample, maybe I should actually beef up the transients a bit. I'll, I'll quickly just quickly do that. Um we can use anything. So if I take this this audio effect from before and put it on here, what we used to be pinging with just a single blip of white noise is now an entire drum loop, an entire break. So. If something sounds cool with white noise, then it's going to sound fucking awesome with that. And this is how I, I generally make a lot of basses. A lot of my, yeah, a lot of my bass design stems from literally putting reverb on the sub, which is kind of funny. A lot of people joke about that, but whatever. So really at this point, I don't have much else to say. Obviously, I'm trying very, very hard to not blit out any other specific examples. There's been like five that have just come into my head throughout the course of me uh, doing this video. 
so it's so difficult to not like say, oh, do this. It sounds cool because you know it's not it's not fun. You don't get to figure it out yourself. You know, the delayed gratification is so much better. So I'm just gonna end it here, right? That makes sense. So why don't you uh, go close YouTube, right? When you throw your phone on the other side of the room, not don't you know don't throw it, you know, place it very carefully on the other side of your room. Go go over to your computer and open up Ableton and uh, make some music, right? Like, why are you on YouTube? Get off of YouTube immediately. <laughs> so. I'll wait. I'll wait for you to do that. It's just. I'll wait. <sighs> all right. Well, if you're still here, fuck you. First of all, for not listening to me. But uh, second, you probably enjoyed the video, so maybe consider subscribing or following me on my socials, etc. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I recently released an album, a bit more than a week ago. So if you're interested, maybe you could give that a listen. Here, you know what? Actually. In fact, I will play, play a clip from it. Whoa, here's a clip. All right, no more. Um, so hopefully that's encouraged you to maybe listen to my, to my music because I like it. I think you will too. Um, I also have a Discord server, et cetera, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, also, the outro song for this video I, I made last night using a lot of the techniques I, I talked about in the video. So, yeah, well, thank you for watching. See you later.